I got a comment recently from someone on how I unschool science. Today I'm going to share what I've done over the years to introduce scientific concepts to my kids and what resources I use to help make science be interesting, engaging, and meaningful to my kids. Welcome back, I'm Beth. So I've taught science to my kids since they were toddlers. It was through simple experiments that I found from other moms on Pinterest, through cooking in the kitchen with them, and through getting out into nature. I also got easy reader books by National Geographic when they were younger that gave them good introductions to scientific concepts. Space and planets, animals, our bodies, earth, weather all told through simple books. Listen, we have used scientific curriculum in the past, and a lot of times my kids have told me that they were bored with that curriculum or it just was uninteresting to them and a waste of time. That doesn't mean that they don't like science though, because I can tell you through our life experiences that they care very much about scientific topics through our daily life. They just didn't want to be taught concepts that they didn't ask to be taught. And the reason I know that they are interested in scientific concepts is through the questions that they ask in our everyday life. So my kids ask lots of questions and we have discussions about them in real time. We talk about different types of weather. We talk about different types of animals and which ones are prey and which ones are predators. We talk about how there are different kinds of plants and flowers and how to grow them and bugs and insects and if they sting or if they bite us or if they're just annoying bugs. <laughs> We talk about how certain animals live in certain parts of the world and not in other parts of the world. We talk about how there are mammals, amphibians, aquatic animals, semi-aquatic animals, birds. We go outside in the dark on a cloudless night and find constellations in the sky. We talk about the moon, the sun, the planets, stars, the galaxies, and what stars are made of. We also talk about space exploration, astronauts, black holes, and satellites. We talk about how our bodies work, how eating healthy foods, getting good exercise, and getting enough sleep are all so important to our health. We talk about germs and how we can get other people sick and personal hygiene. My kids ask very good questions like, why do some people have darker skin and other people have lighter skin? Why do we have bones in our body? Why does your hair turn gray when you get old? Why does your nose run when you cry? Why do our brains give us bad dreams? How do people talk and why do our voices sound different? These are all real questions that my kids have asked from one time or another and I keep a record of them so that I can remember what kinds of amazing questions they ask. We talk about the earth, we talk about earthquakes, we talk about landforms, we talk about different bodies of water, we talk about doctors and medicine and surgeries and hospitals and how fortunate we are to have modern medicine. We talk about how food is grown, some in the ground, some on trees, some in the vines, and then we talk about other types of food that is made in factories. We talk about the vitamins and the minerals that we can get from natural non-processed foods and why those are so good for for our body and then we also talk about how the processed foods are not so good for our bodies. We go on walks all around our town and we also hike in our forest preserves in our area and my kids are constantly picking up sticks, leaves, rocks, pine cones and we're talking about them. We're talking about the different kinds of trees that we have in our area. The ones whose leaves fall off in the fall and the other ones that have needles that are evergreen. We talk about different types of plants that grow in the forest areas. We also talk about animals that live in the forest. And one time when we went on a walk as a family in one of our favorite forest preserves, we were lucky enough to see a group of deer eating plants really close to our path. There was another couple walking ahead of us and they didn't even notice them. I've also been very intentional throughout the years about taking our kids to zoos and aquariums so that they can see lots of different types of animals in real life. I also love taking them to children's museums that have lots of hands-on activities that are so engaging to my kids. My favorite science museum of all time is the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago. We have gone there so many times 
and they have all of these amazing exhibits and so many hands-on activities that the kids can get into. My son's favorite is their tornado simulator. That's one of the first reasons why we went to the Museum of Science and Industry in the first place was because my son was so interested in weather and I knew that they had a tornado simulator there and they have other simulators there as well. It's just an amazing place to go. I also get books on topics that my kids show interest in. For instance, when my oldest was about five years old, he became interested in tornadoes and other types of extreme weather because he experienced tornado warnings. That led him to becoming interested in meteorology, weather patterns, weather maps, books about all kinds of weather and climate. Studying maps about weather led him to being interested in geography. So I bought him a world atlas, um, a field guide to weather, and weatherpedia. My seven-year-old daughter a few years ago got very into lions and other big cats. So I would take her to the library weekly and she would always grab all the books that she could find off the shelves about lions or cheetahs or cougars or mountain lions, all different types of things that she would read them to herself or I would read them to her. And I bought these two books for Christmas for her last year because she borrowed them from the library so many times and just wanted to own them herself. So these are A Day in the Life of Big Cats and DK Find Out Big Cats. She loves to just go through these herself. In all of these scenarios, our learning has come from our experiences and our discussions about those experiences. And then the books that we read about certain things about nature and science have led to more discussions and more experiences. It was natural, non-forced learning. My point is, science is all around us and our kids are constantly observing the world and the people and things that are in it. The best thing that we can do as homeschooling parents is help them to notice the things around them, point things out and ask them what they think about them, bring up topics and see what they have to say, answer questions when they have them. Either answer them right there if you know the answer or if you don't know the answer, Show your kids how to find the answers. I usually do that through books, or I'll Google it real quick, or we'll watch videos about it. We can help our kids the most by modeling being in awe of learning about the world around us. You can definitely buy a science curriculum to use to teach your kids about certain topics of science, like physical science or life science, because it can be pretty overwhelming trying to decide which branch of science to focus on, and then how to present it to your kids in a way that is engaging and not overwhelming. Most science curricula will give you a teacher guide about how to talk to your kids about that topic, and then they might also include a, an experiment that would be like a hands-on activity that would go along with that subject area. You can use formal science curriculum, but I would also just encourage you to keep picking up those scientific books about topics that your kids are asking about or are interested in that are in an easy to understand format. Then you can watch as they expand on that topic themselves by asking really good questions, wanting to know more, or sharing what they think about those topics. Some books I have that I recommend are these National Geographic Kids books about different topics. We also have multiple Scholastic Magic School Bus books and these Benden Reading Discovery books. What I love about them is that they have great illustrations and bite-sized bits of information on the topic that aren't overwhelming to your kids. I've looked into some other science books that come from DK and while they are excellent and they are thorough, it's just overwhelming to especially my ages of kids. We just want these interesting tidbits, we want some facts, we want something interesting and engaging, but not so much text to get through. This DK Smithsonian book is one of my favorites. I saw this online and thought this would be such a great resource. And it's not something that I sit down and read cover to cover with my kids. But what ended up happening was I bought this book and my oldest, who is 12, decided to pick it up one day as we were driving around running errands. He was interested. I didn't force him to look through this book. I just was able to put it in his hands. He chose to look through it and find found interesting information that he wanted to share with me about it. 
So a lot of times having these really great reference books just in your home in an easy to reach place for your kids to flip through and read if they're able to read can be so, so good. You don't have to be the one that's trying to read it to them and ask them questions and quiz them about it. They can really, they'll pick up on these things on their own. So I'm going to leave a link in the description of this video with my recommended science book list that I have put together on bookshop.org so you can go and take a look at those books. And if you're unfamiliar with bookshop.org, it is similar to Amazon with buying books, except that bookshop.org supports locally owned independent bookstores. When you buy a book through bookshop.org, all of the proceeds go to locally owned bookstores all around the world. You know, some of these books I borrow a lot from the library, but if they are reference books that I know my kids are just gonna look at over and over again, then it's worth it to me to have our own copy of it so that they can always be looking at it. I hope that this video was helpful to you. I hope that you'll go check out my link and find some great science books that you can either read with your kids or let them peruse whenever they they want. But the goal is to just be in awe of everything that's happening around us and how science is in the kitchen. It's outside in our backyards. It's stargazing on a cloudless night. It's picking up sticks and rocks and throwing them into a river in the forest. And it's being an appreciation of these bodies that we have that we are going to try to take the best care of. If you enjoyed this and you want to learn more about um, unschooling different topics, then you can click or tap the screen here to watch this one. Thanks for watching.